Right, we're beginning a new book of the Torah. And the book is called the book of Leviticus. And Vayikra. It's called Vayikra because of the first word, but also because of the topic. It is the beginning of a whole new way that God was speaking to Moses before he spoke to him on Mount Sinai. And on Mount Sinai, he gave him the whole Torah and repeated it all over. But now he's sort of repeating it or clarifying it. And he's calling to Moses and giving him all these laws and instructions about exactly details of how to make the sacrifices, and what different type of sacrifices there are. So these, of course, are all commandments which were included in the Torah, but a lot of them were not understood. <clears throat> so Moses, God is now explaining to Moses how these commandments are. According to other opinions, he gave it to Moses just in a very general way, and it wasn't even, uh, the command wasn't actually a commandment until God gave it to him. Now, however it is, God is now explaining or giving the commandments to Moses about these sacrifices. And I want to go over the sacrifices that are in this week's Torah portion that we're going to be talking about. But just in general, we'll have just a general overview of what's going on over here. Not to forget that the commandments are all from God. Who God is, there's, right? So we talked about this before, the 16 commandments. 11 of them are positive things that you have to do in the commandments. And just so that you don't forget who God is, God is creating me and you. And God creates the whole universe. God creates all the angels. And the Torah is the reason why. And one of the reasons why is so that we will do <clears throat> the commandments. And one of the main commandments is the tabernacle, the, 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 the holy temple. The holy temple is also called the tabernacle. I said the mikdash. So the tabernacle was also called a mikdash. It was called a holy <clears throat> temple. And the purpose of it was to connect the creation to the creator. And of course, you know that the creation is very complicated and very diverse and, um, and very intricate. And uh, th th that's one of the reasons why the commandments are also very intricate, because the idea is, is to remove the negative, selfish, destructive things from the world and reveal in the world the creator. His creator reason. So it's almost as though we don't really have to do anything. We just have to reveal what God is. But that's it's almost that way, but it's not that way. Because God created the world to make a new thing. And this is a new thing we're going to see. It means that God gets pleasure. What, that, what exactly that means is um, <clears throat> it can't be understood. But on the other hand, it's very simple. I mean, God is creating us. So he has, he has, that, has a will because he's creating us. So... That's his external will. So when we do what God wants, his internal will is if he's got a will, so we can also have pleasure. I mean, he has, that's, will is a human trait. So he also has pleasure. Okay, so here we go. How does it start off? Vayikra el Moshe. That God called to Moses. Where did he call him from? Where did he call from? That God spoke to him from the tent of meeting. Now, what does the tent of meeting? We talked about this before. In fact, we talked about it very in, in great detail the last uh, uh, for the last for three or four weeks. So just repeat it very, very simply. In the holy temple, there were basically three areas. Three areas where the service was done. The service was done. There was the area which was called the Holy of Holies. That's where the tab tablets were. And there, there was one time in the year God was served there, and that was when the Holy the High Priest went in. Then it was what's called, that was the Holy of Holies. That's sometimes called the Dvir. <laughs> then there was what's called the Holy. There was a curtain <clears throat> in front of the Ark that divided that room off. And then there was an outer room that was twice as big. And there there was the candelabra, the seven branches, and the, the, the small old altar for the incense. And there was the, the face bread. Face bread was on the right. And the, can, 
and the candles was on the, were on the left. And that was in the, <clears throat> the half that was near, the half of the outer room that was near the altar. It was, not, it was near the, uh, the ark, I'm sorry. Near the ark, it was near that curtain. And then there was the outer part of that, right? But that's the same room, it's the same thing. The outer, but then there was, then that was, what do we say? Three parts, right? So there was one, one part was the Holy of Holies. The next one was called the Holy. That was also called the Tent of Meeting, Oel Moed. <clears throat> and then outside of that, there was the <clears throat> Mizbeach. There was the altar. The altar. And that's the three places where service was done. The fact is, there was also a fourth place also, and that's the courtyard. In the courtyard, there were some sacrifices that could be made in the courtyard. For instance, the Pesach, Pesach Paschal Lamb. It's called Kochim Kalim. <clears throat> they could be made in the in the courtyard as well. So okay, that's what that. So, so Moses went from outside. He went into the courtyard, and from the courtyard he went into the place where the altar was, and then he went to the Oel Moed. That's where the candelabra was, and that's where God spoke to him. All right. So I want to do the first three or four quickly, and then we'll go back. God spoke to Moses. Beautiful, long explanations here by the Orachim and by the Kliyakar. That's what God will and we'll go, go back and do some of this. So God says to Moses, what does he say? The bear of an Israel, speak to the Jewish people, and say to them, Elam, to them, Adam, a person, Ki Yakriv Korban, when he Makes kiyakriv when he makes me came from you, korban a sacrifice. Lashem, and here Rashi says we learn from here it has to be sacrifice has to come from you and not be stolen. If it comes from there are three types of offerings, three types of of uh, life for I say animals that it can come from. One is Sheep, one is goats, one is cows. That's it. That's the behemoth. If it comes from a hey, behemoth, if you bring behemoth is, I guess, in a general term for bovine. Eh? Behema. If you want to bring a sacrifice from the behemoth, from one of the you know grazing animals, then it can come either from the bucker, from cows, oxes, tzone, sheep. And also in sheep is also goats. Korban chen. You can make your sacrifices. Sheep and goats. Just like the Pesach offering. Pesach offering could be either from a sheep or a goat. Okay. Im ola. Okay. That, so there's really let's say three types of animals you can bring. That's <clears throat> cows, sheep, and goats. What about birds? There's birds you can also bring. Pigeons. That's it. Older pigeons and younger pigeons. Then there's bread. Then there's bread offerings. It's called mincha. That's also burnt on the offering on the altar and it's eaten. <clears throat> okay, Vasamach Yado Al Roshaullah. The person who's bringing the offering, he has to press his hands. On um, the offering, he stands next next to it. One second. Oh. He puts his hands on the offering, and he stands next to it. Puts his hands on it, and near tzalol love and it is, and the the sacrifice will be accepted, and it will bring him forgiveness. Now, again, and I want to stress very strongly that the sacrifices did not come for purposeful sins. If a person did a purposeful sin, a purpose, intentional sin, then he had to repent. And if he repented, then God would accept him. There's all sorts of, he had to repent. But if he did an accidental sin, what's called the shogeg, he did an accidental sin, it was a certain type of an accident. It had to be an accident where he purposely, intentionally did what he, the sin, but he didn't know it was a sin. He purposely lit a fire on Shabbat, but either he didn't know it was Shabbat or he didn't know it was forbidden to do. That's called shogeg. 
on sacrifices like that, on, on sins like that, you brought a sacrifice. And uh, you can ask a question one second. What's well, he didn't do a sin? So what he says, no, he, of course the person did do a sin. He purposely, let's say for an example, he ate uh, milk and meat together. Milk and meat together, but his rabbi told him that it was okay, right? His rabbi told him it was all right. If you just can't eat cow milk together with its mother's milk, with its mother's meat, don't boil, but you can eat it with other, which is a lie, it's not so, even though that's what it says in the Torah. So that if, if you do what the rabbi tells you, and the rabbi made a mistake, so that's called a shogeg. You have to bring a sacrifice. Bring a sacrifice, and that forgives the person. That's it. And he has to regret to a certain degree, but there's not so much of a regret because he didn't intentionally do anything bad. If a person didn't know at all that it was chilev, let's say somebody told him that this is not chilev, this is um, a regular kosher meat, right? There was a whole big story in America that there was a, a, a butcher store where he bought not kosher meat and he forged the, the stamps. So everybody was eating not kosher meat. So if so, the person, that's not a sin at all. The person that is, even though, of course, it has an effect on the person, you know, a negative effect, but still it's not considered to be a sin. He didn't have any idea who was doing anything wrong. On the other hand, then there's the other side. A person purposely lights a candle, lights light on Shabbos, or he purposely eats not kosher food. That type of a sin is not forgiven in the Holy Temple. That type of a sin, you have to repent and you have to do other good acts, whatever it is. There's a whole, a whole uh, order of uh, each and every sin, how a person can, can, can clean himself and such a, if he did it on purpose. That's a whole different thing. There are certain sins that you can, that if they're done on purpose, that's called an asham. There's an asham vadai. We'll talk about that later. Okay, here we go. Ready? God spoke, speaks to Moses from the tent of the meeting in the, in the tabernacle. And he says, Moses, the reason this whole place exists is to make sacrifices. And here the sacrifices are. If you want to bring a cow, a sheep, a goat, you can do it. You want to bring a deer, there's, can't, there's kosher animals which are, cannot be brought. A deer, an antelope, it's called chaya. They are kosher, you can't eat them, right? You have to ask a rabbi what exactly they are. A buffalo, who knows? Some people say a buffalo. A giraffe could be kosher, right? And the, 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 if it was kosher, it would be the easiest animal in the world to eat. It's, you have to set, slaughter it by cutting the somewhere in the neck, anywhere in the neck. So it's got a huge neck. <clears throat> so, okay, th th so therefore, but those, they cannot be brought as a sacrifice. Only those three, what's called animals, cow, sheep, goat, birds, two, there's only two types, and the older and younger, is just by the age, and bread, and there's the bread offerings. Okay, he puts his hands on the offering, he has to put his hands, we'll talk about what this is, putting his hands on the offering. And he's to slaughter the cow in front of God. Right, he has to come, what does it mean, in front of God? In the Azara, in the, in the, the how do you say, the, 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 the outer courtyard. And they should throw the blood on the Mizbech around Petach or Moed. This is a person who wants to bring did I skip something? Oh, yeah, I skipped the gimel. <clears throat> I skipped the sentence. If it's an ola, an ola means a, uh, an offering that's burned up totally to God. He has to bring a male, unblemished, sacrifice it at the entrance of the ol moed. Sacrifice. <laughs> right, where is this sacrifice also? It means <clears throat> sorry. Right. It, in other words, on the altar <clears throat> that's in the outside, that's right in front of the tent of meeting on the altar, that it has to be all dealt with and etc. We're gonna go over this, like I say. He has to put his hands on it. There's so much commentary that I missed this. this, this. And he slaughters the animal, the benabakar, the male animal, in front of God. And Aaron and his son sacrifice the blood. They throw the blood on the altar. So there we have two things already we've learned. Number one, the animal has to be slaughtered. Number two, the blood has to be brought 
to the altar, the outer altar. And it has to be, the blood has to be sprinkled around it. We'll talk about how, right? The altar. And this is on the outside, in the petach al In other words, outside on the tent of meeting, outside of the tent of meeting where the big altar was. Then after you've slaughtered it, and after you've sprinkled the blood, then you remove the skin from the animal, and you cut it up to its different parts. You give Aaron and Aaron, and his the coin puts fire on the altar, and you put wood on the fire. There's two two different opinions. One person says that one opinion says that there's three uh, like fires burning on the altar. This is talking the big brown, big uh, um, uh, copper altar that's outside. outside of the um, the tent of meeting. He makes a fire in a case, it tends to, and Aaron and his sons, they put the pieces on the fire. The, whole, the head, the stomach, and the wood, which is on the fire, which is on the big altar. And the inside of it, they wash with water first, and they burn everything on the altar. This is an ola, a total offering, a fire offering. This is what I wanted to get to. This is a pleasant smell to God. What does it mean, pleasant smell to God? So it says, don't think that God actually smells the offerings. In fact, the offerings did not have a good smell to them at all. So it says, it is a pleasant pleasure to me, said God. It's a pleasure. But that what I said was done. Right, this gives you a small picture of what's going to be. Now that's if you brought a cow. What if you brought a sheep? What if you brought? So it says the sheep has to be either from the sheep or from the goats. And then it tells you what to do with that also. You have to slaughter it, etc. You have to slaughter on the on the the right side of the altar, what's called the north side, in front of God. You also you throw the blood on it on the mizbeach around. Good. That, and then you cut it off to parts, the head and the, the fats or whatever, and you put the coin on the puts it on the wood, which is on the fire, which is on the altar. All right, now I want to look, we'll just, we're going to go over a lot of this, especially the beginning. Where we're talking about God calling to Moses. What does it mean he calls to Moses? There's a beautiful Rashi over here, she'll explain, but I want to just go over to another book, which explains what are the, wait a second, one minute. I had it all prepared over here, one minute. No. All right. I had it all planned. Everything was all planned out. Oh, there it is. Good. These are the commandments. This is a book which is called Mitzvot Hashem, the commandments of God. It has listed all the commandments and an explanation of them also. And I think you can also download it in English. I didn't look for it, but I think you can. And there it has an explanation of all of the 613 commandments and also general principles, what are the seven noid commandments and what are the seven commandments of the rabbis. So let's just go through them quickly. We have 11 positive commandments and five negative commandments. 11 positive commandments and five prohibitions. And they all deal with the altar. These are not practical for us at least they weren't a couple minutes ago. Soon there's going to be the Holy Temple, and they're going to be built. The Holy Temple will be built, and we'll be offering up these offerings again. Also, most of these commandments that we're learning here, they're not relevant to us anyway, because we're not coins. If you were a coin, then it's relevant to you. You have to prove you're a coin, but nevertheless, if you're a coin, then it's relevant to you. And it could be that 24 minutes from right now, you're going to have to start serving in the Holy Temple because it says the Holy Temple is going to come from heaven. 
and there's um, a law, there's an opinion that a coin is not allowed to drink wine, even now, because a person that's under the, a coin that's under the influence of wine cannot serve in the Holy Temple, and it takes wine 24 minutes to wear off, and within 24 minutes from right now, it could be that you will be called to serve God in the temple. So you're a coin. That's one of the prices you have to pay. Don't drink. If that's not the law, though. The law is not so. But uh, it's something to think about. Uh, let's do a few of the commandments, right? Positive commandments, 11, prohibitions, 5. This is what we're going to learn about in this week's Torah portion. Positive commandments to do the Ola, the complete offering. And like we said, the owners have to put their hands on the head of the offering. And they say, I have sinned, I have transgressed. I have gone uh, off either a positive commandment or on, on a negative commandment that I can fix up. But like, don't steal, I can return it. And now I'm repenting. And you slaughter the animal on the north side of the altar. North side is the... As you're coming in to the holy temple or into the tabernacle, so you're coming in from the east to the west. So the north is on the right side. So that's where you sacrifice. You, you sacrifice the animal. And, but a coin has to, even a non coin can sacrifice it. But a non coin receives the blood on the north. And he throws it on the altar below the middle. It was called the Chuta Sikra. There was a, a red line around the middle of the altar. You throw the blood on the bottom. Some blood has to be thrown above. Ola Sa'of. I think. <clears throat> so it says that you throw it on you, you, you throw it on two corners. The east, northeast corner which is northeast corner, east is the side that's closest to the door, and north is on the right. So in other words, as you're coming in, on that corner that's to your right, and Bekeren Maravis Dromit, and also on the opposite corner, the corner that's on the side that's close to the, uh, to the, um, the curtain, the, the tent of meeting, but on the left side, draw meat. That's like where the where the ramp is, on the other side of the ramp. You have to throw it on the corner, and you're intending that it should be on the four corners. In other words, that it should should be hitting the four corners. It should be shaped like a sort of like an R. It's a gum. Oh, gimel, gimel, gamma, delta, gum. Okay, that's there's more details. In the Ola offering, next commandment, to do Mincha. What's Mincha? Mincha is you're offering up, burning up bread offerings. There are in general four types of bread offerings. Here we go. Um, where are they? Doesn't have it. Uh, here's, there's some places they have olive based gimel dollar is written. Okay, anyway, there's four different types. One of them is actually from chametz. All the other, it's forbidden to bring any sort of uh, leavened bread into the what un unleavened bread. Anyway, bread that rises, you can't bring it into the altar. It's forbidden. Call seorba, call devash, lo takribu. But in this, in the mincha, if you bring it for a Thanksgiving offering, is they bring forty loaves. And 10 of those loaves can be made from chametz, but the others are not. Third commandment, negative commandment, don't bring any seor or devash. So that's what I mean. You can't bring any unleavened bread. I never really figured this out. Unleavened bread is the one that rises up or leavened bread? Unleavened bread. I think unleavened is the bread that rises up, right? I don't know. I guess I'm not going to. Got to catch up on my 
my biblical in, uh, Hebrew, biblical English, biblical English, leavened bread. Okay, I don't know, whatever. Any comments you can't bring in, that's the point. I'll look it up and see what, you, what it is. You're not allowed to bring bread that rises up into the, that's called seor. And you can't bring any dvash, any honey. And honey, it says there's different opinions to what honey means. But honey usually means sweet, um, sweet um, sap that comes from fruits and things like that. That's called devash. But simple meaning is you're not allowed to bring any sweet things or any chavich, any chametz into the temple, except for two exceptions. The Thanksgiving offering, like we just said, and on Sukkot, on Shvot, the holiday of Shvot, they bring two loaves of bread that rises up. Negative commandment. We're going to learn about all this in this week's Torah portion. You must not omit salt in your sacrifice. That's what the mimer we're learning in the morning. You must bring, put salt on all of the offerings. Every offering has to be with some degree of salt. Positive commandment. That's the negative commandment. Don't leave it out. Positive commandment, put it on. You have to put salt with every single sacrifice. Like it says, Al Kor Takriv Melech. Melech. So the one says, Al Tash beat Melech. There's one commandment that says, don't leave it out. And there's another commandment that says, put it on. Put, the, put uh, some salt on every sacrifice. Positive commandment. If the judicial court made a mistake, they have to bring a special sacrifice. If they made a mistake in a law, there's, the, there's a, a whole Mishnayot Horayot, which talks about this. What happens if the court, we're talking about the big Sanhedrin, or any other judicial court, but mainly the Sanhedrin, if they make a mistake in law, and people do according to the law, then they have to bring a special sacrifice for that. That's it says that's the Sanhedrin. About the Sanhedrin. There's all sorts of stipulations and conditions, how it is that what type of a commandment they have to, has to be just part of the commandment, and it can't be something that's like obvious that everybody knows they made a stupid mistake, then they don't bring it. It has to be a real logical mistake that they omitted one part of a commandment, that they negated the whole entire commandment. For instance, they said you don't have to keep Shabbat anymore, then they don't bring what the sacrifice, because that's too obvious, it's too, it's too, that's almost like a purposeful. Next, positive commandment, an individual should bring what's called a sin offering if he made a shogeg. This is what I talked about before in the beginning of class. If he made a sin by shogeg, shogeg means he purposely did the sin, but he didn't know it was a sin. He didn't know it was sin. He thought that it was permissible to smoke a cigarette on Shabbat. It says you're supposed to get a pleasure Shabbat. He thought it was permissible, or he didn't know today was Shabbat. He thought that today is Tuesday, and he smoked. He intentionally smoked a cigarette. It wasn't an accident. He smoked a cigarette, but he didn't know it was Shabbat. Either he didn't know it was Shabbat, or he didn't know it was forbidden. That's called a shogig. He has to bring a special offering for that as well. Next. It is a positive commandment that you have to testify in court any testimony that you know about a case, whether for good or whether for bad. This is a command which is yes relevant today. If you see something, you're supposed to go and testify. And if the court finds you as, and you swear you don't know anything, then you have to bring a sacrifice. We'll talk about that in a moment. Positive commandment, that was, there's, there's a commandment, there's a sacrifice which is called an olive yored. An olive yored means that sometimes a person does a sin and he has to bring, there's certain sins where you bring the sacrifice according to your financial abilities. If you have enough money, the best thing is you bring an ox. You don't bring a sheep. If you don't have enough money, then you can bring birds. If you don't have enough money, you can bring meal offerings.
Next, bird offerings. When you make bird offerings, you, you, you're supposed to slaughter the bird. You kill the bird. It's a special, difficult way of slaughtering it. The Kohen has to slaughter it with his fingernail. He has a long fingernail, and he slaughters it from the back of the neck, which is forbidden to do outside of the Holy Temple. If it's done outside of the Holy Temple, then the bird is not kosher. But if it does inside of the Holy Temple, then it is kosher. In fact, if he slaughters it in the regular way, inside of the Holy Temple, and it's not good for a, a sacrifice. It's not good. Okay, but he has to be careful when he does uh, slaughter the bird this way from the back of the neck, that he cuts the windpipe and the food pipe, but he does not sever the head from the body. Difficult work to do, difficult to, deed to accomplish. Negative commandment, don't put oil and the bread offering, a sinner's bread offering, like it says, don't put any oil in it. Negative commandment, don't put lavona. Now, lavona was a certain type of incense that they would bring, they would put it on. It says, nevertheless, you're not allowed to put lavona on this offering because it enhances the offering. And this is the first person is a sinner, so he's not supposed to enhance his offering. Positive commandment. A positive commandment, a person that that misuses, he uses for his own personal use, he gets personal pleasure from holy things, then, or if he eats, let's say, truma, truma is the food, the portion of your food that's supposed to be given to the Kohen, if you eat that, then there's a special offering that has to be given. First of all, you have to add on a fifth like it says, <clears throat> and you have to pay the, the, the value of what you got pleasure from. You have to add on to a fifth. Right, no, no, here, I'm sorry, that's right. Fifth, and you have to also bring a sacrifice, which is called the Korban Asham. An Asham, it's called the Asham Mi'ila, a special sacrifice if you used the holy things for your own personal use, there's an offering. Of course, there are, these things don't exist now. When there'll be the third temple, they will. Positive commandment, you have to bring an asham talui. An asham talui means that you, you, you have a doubt if you did a sin or not. You have a doubt if you did a sin or not. And they, they mean the classic example is that you see there's two hamburgers and you eat one of them. And someone comes in and says, hey, where's Where's the hamburger? I put a hamburger over here. You say, oh, I just ate one. I don't know. I, I mean, I want one. No, I said, well, that hamburger that I put down there, that was that was made from, you know, pork. It was a pork hamburger that I put there. Wow, well, and here's the other one. Here, no problem. Let's just go and check this other one out and see what it was. We'll take, hey, where's the other one? You see, there's a dog running off in the distance laughing, and he's got the other hamburger. So the question is, which one? Did I eat? Did I eat the not kosher one or the kosher one? No way of knowing. So I have to bring a sacrifice. And that sacrifice is called a korban ashama, talui. It's called a suspended or a doubtful sacrifice I have to bring. Because I have a doubt if I did a sacrifice, if I did a, a sin or not. And in fact, this, is, this has to be worth more than if I for certainly did a sin. Positive commandment. If a Jew steals something, he has to return it. He has to return it. It is a commandment to return anything that you steal from a person. A commandment. It's a sin to steal, of course. But it, in addition to that, you can fix it up by returning it. This is a commandment. And if you don't return it, so you've done two sins. You've transgressed a negative commandment of stealing prohibition, and you've also transgressed a positive commandment because you were supposed to return and you didn't. A positive commandment, another commandment, this is what's called a, a sacrifice because it's asham. And we talked about this before. We just finished talking about the asham. Uh, the asham, if you have a doubt if you did a sin, and here is the asham vadai. What does it mean, vadai? That you did a certain sin and 
you found out, right? You, you, you did a certain thing, you found out afterwards that that's what you did, right? You did, found out, you did it, the sin, you didn't know it was a sin, but you found out afterwards clearly that this was a sin. That's called an Asham Vadai. You know for sure that you did. There's also other, we can go into this Asham Vadai. says there's really five of them. There have to be five cases. One of them is, like we said about a person who steals and he swears he didn't steal and suddenly he regrets it. So he has to uh, return it back and give a, give a one fifth. Another one is, which is not to be confused with the Geneva, a Ganav. A Ganav has to pay back double. A Ganav is a person that does it secretly. A, a, a Gazalan is a person that he steals publicly. When he returns it, if he swore that he didn't, and then he, re, he when he returns it, he has to add on a fifth. And, then, and he has to also bring the sacrifice <clears throat> when he is uh, this. The second one is Asham Mi'ila that we just talked about. He misuses things of the temple. Then he has to also add on a fifth, and he brings this sacrifice also. Another Asham, it's called the Asham Varai. A third is a Shifcha Harufa, very strange. Uh, th- this is a We'll, we'll discuss what this is after. We'll do it tomorrow because the class is over. The Shifcha Charufa is a very strange law in Judaism. It's a, a woman that she's a uh, freed slave. Okay. And finally is Asha Matsora. Asha Matsora is a person that gets Tzorat, which that's what we're going to talk about in a couple of weeks. Tzorat was a biblical skin disease that it came out on the skin that showed it's an impurity. As when the person became pure, so he has to bring a sacrifice. That's called a Matsora. So we have just gone over, in a very short way, the introduction to this week's Torah portion, Vayikra, that God called to Moses, and we said it was in, a, in an endearing way. God wants to show Moses, Moses how much he loved him. From the Ohel Moed, the new way that God is revealing himself. And from the Ohel Moed, from the tent of meeting, and we went over just very, very briefly the 11 positive commandments and the five prohibitions that are in this Torah portion. See you tomorrow, 8.15, God willing, with Mashiach now. And tomorrow we'll go more into detail about these different commandments.